Okay, so we're going to start the beach scene now. Just picking up some of that ultramarine blue and white for the sky. Now obviously the top part of the sky is going to be a fair bit darker than the horizon level. So as I come down, I'm just picking up a little bit more white. Actually, I'll do the horizon line down here first so we know where we're going. And then come back up. Okay, now as you can see, I'm kind of developing that, the bands of the different tones, okay? So we want to get rid of that. So the best way of getting rid of that is just by pushing your brush up in a crisscross motion. So it tends to pull the light color up and the dark color down. And then just go left to right, left to right until it all evens out. Now for this scene I do want a nice, plain, simple sky. So I don't want too much action in it. It's all quite rare for me. <laughs> I love painting skies and clouds. But in this scene here, I do want the focal point to be the foreshore and the foam area. Okay, so I'm now going to pop in the distant ocean. Okay, for that I'm just using a flat, really nice, soft bristled brush. It's a size 18 for this. This is the same one that I use for the sky, or the same size. Um, it is a clean brush for this. Now the distant water closest to the horizon, uh, you'll see I'm leaving a blank strip here, okay? I'll show you why in a tick. That part there where it meets the horizon is a little bit lighter than the rest of the ocean. So I'm actually just dipping my brush now, that same brush, in that sky colour. And I'm just doing that in that blank strip that I left. Now there's different ways you can get the horizon straight because obviously that's important. I find if you use a long brush and hold it at the base of it, um, the quicker you move, you tend to get a straighter line than doing it really slowly. I'm actually getting a little bit of that sapphire colour that we made up with the thalo green and thalo blue. And I have added more thalo blue. So I want it darker. Now I'm bringing that way down here to get rid of that, a lot of that paint off the brush. Okay, now my way, the technique I use to actually get rid of those bands of colours in the ocean to blend them out is, I use the same brush but I wipe that paint off and then I just dip that same brush into water so it's wet and then I come back and I just brush left to right, left to right where those colours meet. So it's obviously going to bring that dark colour up, the light colour down. So it's going to change that, the tone of like that distant colour. But I just leave about a centimetre where I don't go over at all. So that is still that really light, soft colour. Okay. 
Okay, now as you can see, there are tonal changes. Okay, so I've still got that sky colour a fair bit. I've got that muted colour between the sapphire that we made and the sky colour there, and then it comes down to that sapphire colour. Just adding a bit of that mid-tone of the green we made from the white, yellow and phthalo blue. I'm just going to pop a little bit of that down here and blend that into that dark tone. Again, just a little bit of a crisscross formation, just helps blend them together. Right, now I'm not having too much of the ocean. That's enough ocean because we're going to come down, have a little bit of a breaking wave and lots of foam here with a fair bit of sand. But I want, you know, I want the eye to be led to this part of the painting here from the sand and focus on this part, okay? So this is going to be, we're going to add reflections and detail it. But I want to really start down here as well. So what I'm doing, I'm just picking up some of that mid-tone sand colour. Here's where I start doing things a little bit backward, okay? I'm going to add this sand colour down here. This is going to be the slick part, okay? Now it does look very dark. Uh, it's really important to note when you're painting some things can look really dark and real, absolutely ludicrous, really. <laughs> but, you know, it's about painting in layers and building up perspective. So, yes, it's mighty dark, but as soon as we start adding some of the, <laughs> the waves breaking onto this, you'll see why and the effect it gives. Now, I have picked up a little bit of that murky green colour that we made from the white, cad yellow, a little bit of phthalo blue, and I added burnt umber to this. So I'm just popping some of that in here. And again, you'll see I'm mixing it into the brown as well and blending it into that blue at the back, of the green at the back a little bit. I'm using that same brush. I've just washed some of that colour off. So it's just wet, but with not much paint on. And I'm just coming back to blend that in a little bit at the back here to that green a bit more. Okay, just wetting the brush. Now I'm picking up some of the lighter sand colour we made. So this was, this is just burnt umber and white. And I'm picking up more white. Because I want this bottom bit to look a lot lighter than what it is. And 
and then a, the mid-tone of it. I think it is good working with the rule of like the three tones. So for each colour I make, when I went through that colour palette with you, okay, so you have like the dark, the original colour. You have a mid-tone and then you have a lighter version of it. Now with this, where that dark, like the burnt umber colour is, I am actually just going to blend, wash these in together a little bit, so it's not so much of a stark line here. So I've wet my brush again, same brush, not totally cleaned it, just wiped some of that paint off. I'm just going to pick up some more white and pop along here. Now you can see this sand is not blended beautifully, okay? You don't have this wonderful gradation of colour happening and I don't actually want that. which might sound a bit odd, but for my beach scenes, for me, a part of it, to get it looking realistic, is actually having different colours and not it perfectly blended, okay? And again, if you go to the beach, very rarely do you see, you know, just pristine, beautiful sand, you know, or you don't hear anyway. <laughs> um, there's always lumps and bumps and crevices and divots and, you know, areas where you get lots of light shining on, reflecting on some areas in and others. It's going to be a bit darker. You're going to have, you know, some of the sky reflections in the slick, some slick without reflections if it's in shadow from, you know, waves crashing. So in this part when I paint, what I'm saying is I like it being textured, textured I like that appearance of different colour in here already and I do just want this bit up here a bit darker so I've just picked up some burnt umber and added a tad of phthalo blue to it and that's what I'm adding now. 